Hello and welcome back to the score zone fundamentals of data science. Today we are going to discuss more about covariance, covariance matrix, correlation and correlation coefficient. That's in for us today. And basically the main objective of today's lecture is to understand about covariance and correlation. And we want to know how to calculate this covariance as well as the correlation. We are going to see a couple of examples on how to calculate this measures. Let us start with the covariance and correlation right away. So, as far as probability is concerned, we can think about certain mathematical concepts just as, such as the covariance. You might know what is a covariance. Covariance is a measure of how much two random variables vary together in a population. So, when population contains higher dimensions or more variables, of course, we have to use a certain methods or matrices. So, that is where the covariance matrix comes in. We are going to talk about it in a short time. But basically, you have to understand what a covariance is. As we have seen, it is a measure of how much two random variables vary together in a population. And correlation is very similar to the co covariance, but it is in fact a normalized version of covariance. In both cases, covariance as well as the correlation, they describe the degree to which two random variables or sets of random variables tend to deviate from their expected values in a similar way. Here is an example of calculating covariance. So, given a temperature, given the ice cream sale, you can take the average of the temperature as well as the averages that you can see here for the ice cream sale and you are taking the mean of y as you can see it is 14.22 if x is the temperature then ice cream sale is the y. So, you are going to have this table from which you are going to see the mean of x and then we can use the formula for standard deviation, calculate the standard deviation of x and then calculate the standard deviation of y as well. Calculate the standard deviation of y and then now at this point of time you already know what is the mean of x, mean of y, then you have the standard deviation of x, standard deviation of y, right. So, with these two tables, you can see this is for x, x bar, x minus x bar, which is we are finding the difference between mean and then you are going to square them up, sum up, sum them up and then in, in fact, we have to find the average for that as well. In the like manner, we are also doing it for y, y, y bar, y minus y bar. So, this is in fact is the y bar or the average value y minus y bar. Then again, sum of y minus y bar the whole square and finally, you are going to sum up both these two elements x minus x bar the whole square, square times the sum of y minus y bar the whole square. So, these bars are missing here, okay, because that can help us to understand and calculate uh, other factors including the standard deviation of x as well as the standard deviation of y. So, once we have calculated all these values, now we can use the formulas to calculate the covariance and correlation. So, here it is the covariance 
of x and y. Now we can think about even the variance. Can you recall what a variance is? Variance is just for one variable, right? Now we can see there are two variables and we are kind of trying to see how they are deviating from the expected value that is mean, right? So for x as well as for y, for both of them we are actually seeing the difference between the mean, mean of x and mean of y. Thereafter we are calculating this values for covariance. Well that is for covariance. So once you got this covariance in hand, then you can calculate the correlation, correlation coefficient R of x, y. That is nothing but S of x, y that is the co covariance divided by the standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. So that is what we have seen here, the formula initially, right? Correlation coefficient or correlation of x and y equals covariance of x comma y divided by the standard deviation of x and y. Well, in this formula, the standard deviation is given as uh, sigma, which means sigma means for the whole population. And if you just say for Sx and Sy, this is for sample, right? This is for sample, this is for the population. So do not get confused if there is a change in some formulas. They are here we have given as S, S, Sx and Sy. Well, that is the idea behind calculating covariance. Now if uh, the covariance can be of different types, it can have positive sign, it can have negative sign, it can have uh, maybe no sign at all like at times it can be there is no significance differences between the two variables. Let us see what is what are those uh, things in the coming slides. So before we move on uh, here is the actual measures and uh, formulas. You can see the variance. So when we talk about the variance we always talk about only variance of x there is only one variables. Whereas the covariance, whereas the covariance is for between two variables x and y. So covariance between one dimension itself is just a variance, whereas covariance basically is between two dimensions. That is why we get these two variables. So let us see what is this covariance matrix. So as I explained to you earlier, a covariance matrix comes in when there is more dimensions. So covariance calculation, finding relationship between dimensions in higher dimension data sets. When you have higher dimensions of data sets, more than two dimensions, we talked about the x, we talked about x and y. When there is x, y and z, like three dimensions, things get more hard. So when population contains higher dimensions or more variables, a matrix is used to describe the relationship between different dimensions. That is where the covariance matrix comes in. And this covariance matrix are quite important uh, part of many machine learning calculations. Later on you will see how we are going to use these uh, covariance matrices in some of the applications of machine learning. So get familiar in using it. Get familiar with what is a variance, how to calculate variance, how to calculate a covariance because unless you calculate a covariance you cannot fill in this matrix. Well with this thought let us move forward to understand uh, more about the correlation and uh, variances. So as we can see here, the properties of covariance can be seen here in, with respect to this matrix. So the diagonal elements, if you notice closely with this respect to this diagonal elements,
they are the covariance between x and x, covariance between y and y, covariance between z and z. They are same variables, right? So that is why the diagonal elements are nothing but they are the variance of a variable between same variable, so we call it as variance. Whereas the other parts, they are between two variables, so they are covariance. And moreover, you would also notice that the this part covariance of x comma y and covariance of y comma x. So, this in this matrix they are symmetrical about the diagonal. So, for m dimensional data we will have m cross m covariance matrix which means it should be always a square matrix. So, these are some of the properties of a covariance matrix. Moreover, as you can see, we have already seen that the diagonal elements are variance. So, covariance matrix is used in principal component analysis. I told you that it has been used for many machine learning applications. This principal component analysis is one of the primary ways in which uh, you can reduce the features or in other words, you can reduce the dimensions while you perform data pre-processing. So, now we can see how this covariance or understanding the covariance and calculating this covariance are of prime importance when it comes to a data pre-processing. So, while you perform the data pre-processing steps, if you are using the principal component analysis method, then you have to calculate this covariance matrix. Well, that is about covariance. Now, we are going to talk about a correlation. Well, correlation is also very similar to the covariance. Uh, it also brings out a statistical relationship between two random variables or bivariant data. Or in other words, in the broadest sense, a correlation is any statistical association. Though it commonly refers to a degree to which a pair of variables are linearly related. At times, uh, this relationship is not, you, you could say causation. We will see why it is in a short time, which means that one, if A implies B, not necessarily that B implies A, that is the point here. Let us see here, correlations are useful because uh, they can indicate predictive relationship that can be exploited in practice. Just like here, for example, uh, electric, electrical utility may produce less power on a mild day based on the correlation between electricity demand and weather. But in this example, there is a casual relationship because extreme weather cause people to use more electricity for heating or cooling. But in general, the presence of correlation is not sufficient to infer the presence of casual relationship. Yes, correlation does not imply causation. We will see that in a moment why it is. So, there are different types of uh, correlation just like covariance, you have positive correlation, we have negative correlation, you have no correlation. If two variables deviate in the same direction and if the increase or decrease in one results in corresponding increase or decrease in other, the correlation is said to be direct or positive. On the other hand, if the variable constantly deviate in opposite direction, if increase or decrease in one results in corresponding decrease or increase in other, the correlation is said to be negative. Finally, where there is no linear dependency, 
or no relationship between variables, we, we say that no correlation happens. Still we are talking about data points, yes, as you can see when the value of uh, correlation coefficient is 1, it is perfectly correlated, or in other words perfect positive correlation. So that is the first figure, then if the correlation coefficient is 0 0.9, high positive correlation, it is almost closely correlated all the variables, all the data points. Then if it is 0 0.5, low positive correlation, still it is spread out in the same direction it is moving, but little bit spread out. But when there is zero correlation, in other words if the correlation coefficient is zero, we would say that they have no relationship, they are just spread out, no influence is happening. Likewise minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.9 and minus 1, when you have negative correlation, when you have low negative correlation, high negative correlation. So there are different uh, types of correlation, positive negative zero correlation, linear, curve linear correlations like using kind of curve linear. So we always use the Pearson's uh, correlation coefficient to estimate the correlation. The formulas we usually use is a Pearson's correlation coefficient. Let us look at some examples and see how we can calculate a correlation coefficient and determine what type of correlation is that. So here is an example, again ice cream sales versus temperature. So you have the ice cream sale for 12 days and you also have the temperature for 12 days and we are trying to plot in a graph. And you can see of course it looks like a kind of linear relationship between two variables with the sales on the y axis, temperature on the x axis. So here is the steps to calculate the correlation coefficient. Remember the formulas given to us here, we can use this formula to calculate, but as you can see the correlation coefficient or sub x comma y equals summation of x minus x bar times y minus y bar divided by the root of summation of x minus x bar the whole square times y minus y bar the whole square. So we have to find mean of x, we have to find the mean of x, mean of y initially, then subtract the mean of x from every, way, every x value same thing you are going to do for subtract the mean of y from every y value. So we will call them a and b, then calculate a, b, a square and b square for every values, sum of a, b and uh, a, a square and sum of b square, divide the sum of a, b by the square root of sum of a square plus uh, times sum of b square. So that is the actual formula, this one we are actually doing step by step. Let us see here what is happening, we have the temperature in y axis, in fact temperature is in x axis, sales in y axis, then you are calculating the subtracting the mean. You, you, have, you know the mean right here, for example the mean is, mean of x is 18.7, mean of y is 402 and this value here, we got this value, when you subtract this with 14.2 you get 4.5. The same is true when you have 402 for y, the mean of y is 402 minus this one, 215, you get 187, so it is here, minus 187. So that is how we are calculating every thing, step by step, you are doing step 1, step 2, steps 3, 
step 4, step 5. So, here it is step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4. If you follow these steps, you will be able to calculate all values, step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, step 5. You will be able to calculate the correlation coefficient. Remember, we are trying to find a relationship between two variables. Here, the two variables are temperature and sales. So, well, now we got a correlation coefficient, the R, the R values, this is the R of x comma y has been calculated to be 0.9575, which is very close to 1, right. So, if you look at this figure here, this one, point 0.9 is somewhere between this two, right which means it is highly positive correlated. The value that we got is 0 0.95, what is that? 9575, which means that we got a positive correlation there. Well, that is the positive correlation. We have not stopped here, we will continue. So, our ice cream example we have seen just now, uh, there may be a heat wave, imagine there is a heat wave and which means that uh, it is too hot outside. Because it is too hot outside, people are not going near the shop to buy this ice creams. If that happens, the sales would eventually drop. You can see here, as the temperature increases, as the temperature increases, after like 35 degrees, uh, the sales is dropping a lot. So, when this kind of scenario happens, when you try to calculate the correlation between these two variables, you will end up with no correlation. In other words, 0, which means there is no correlation. So, if you want, you can clearly calculate and see what happens. At this point, for example, at this point 25, there is a peak, but after that it started to decline. So, we can actually study more about the data, how the data spread is happening and what is this peak point and if you are a salesperson or if you are a company that actually produces ice cream, you may have to think about how weather is affecting people to buy the ice cream, whether it is hot or cold. Accordingly, with the given data from the previous days or previous months or last season, previous years, summer, accordingly, if you can already have other data in hand, including the predicted temperature for the next week, you can accordingly plan your sale. You can have some strategies in which you can improve your sales. It is about data science, still we are talking about data science, how data points can give you and reveal you certain relationships. And another thing to look at, correlation is not causation, we already talked about it, we will see an example. So, a correlation does not prove one thing cause the other one. If one thing happens, it does not necessarily mean that the other thing will happen. As we see in logics, if A implies B, if suppose we say that if A implies B, it does not necessarily mean that B implies A. So, we can look at that perspective. So, in this ice cream example again, uh, if suppose ice cream shop finds uh, how many sunglasses were sold by a big store for each day and compare with the ice cream sale. And now you have the ice cream sale and the sun gas sale or sun glass sold in x and y axis. It looks like as if there is a correlation, right? The correlation between sun glass and ice cream is very high. It looks almost same like if you draw a line, it is almost it hitting the center of the lines. If you find the correlation, maybe it is almost 0.9, which is highly correlated. But does this mean that sunglass makes people want ice cream? 
not necessarily. That's why we say correlation is not a causation. So, you should be very careful in formulating and evaluating and coming to the conclusion. We have the data right, but we, are use, we should not be using it wrongly to come up with the wrong conclusion and the wrong insight. If you come up with the wrong conclusion, then you do not have any value, you are not creating any value with this given data. So, that is what we saw today. We understand what is the covariance and what is the covariance matrix and how it is applied in various machine learning methods. We also talked about uh, correlation, what is the correlation and how it is calculated. So, while calculating covariance and correlation, we also found that there are different properties of covariance and correlation and correlation does not implies there is a causation. So, we should be careful while using correlation, but we have to understand this measure, it is one of the basic measure to start up, because right now we are seeing a relationship between two variables, correlation between two variables, trying to understand how the data points they are spread between, between these two variables can give us some properties about your data overall system. Well, we are going to talk more about similar things in the coming uh, lectures as well and that will be like explanatory data analysis, EDA, tools and techniques for EDA, data visualization methods. So, these are some of the topics that we are going to discuss in the upcoming class. I am looking forward to see you there. Until then, goodbye.